How'd you like to be a fan of that team right about now? And we move along. And for many fans, nothing beats the sport of hockey and the skill it takes to maneuver a tiny piece of vulcanized rubber on a sheet of ice. Well, one local group of athletes feels exactly the same way, but they're more interested in what happens once the ice melts. Here's Michael Jenkins. At first glance, it looks like a few swimmers practicing scuba in a local pool. But take a closer look and you realize there's something strange going on under the water. It's the sport of underwater hockey. And your reaction is probably the same as everyone else's. Underwater what? Hockey. <laughs> Underwater what? That's actually what they say. They're like, no, I think you made it up. I just told all my coworkers, and they're like, no. They had to like look at a website and see it before they believed me. You get a lot of uh, underwater basket weaving questions. You get a lot of, is it violent? You get a lot of, do you drown? I never drown. No one's ever drowned. Underwater hockey actually started in Britain back in the 1950s. But this team, the Beltway Bottom Feeders, formed about three years ago in D.C. It's a great workout. I would say it's the best workout you could do. So that was, I went into college, I didn't want to gain the freshman 15. I'm like, all right, I'm going to try this sport. I really had no intention of playing underwater hockey. Went by the booth, signed up, everyone signed up. But this uh, really cute girl, Rita, I kind of had a thing for, talked me into it. So I started going and uh, I stuck around and then she went and quit. I kept playing. Here, the traditional hockey stick is replaced by a piece of plastic or wood measuring a foot long. The puck is heavy, about three pounds. Gloves and headgear are worn as protection and scoring occurs when the puck strikes a metal guard. Each game consists of two 15 minute halves, so you have to be in great shape if you want to compete effectively. Now, I know a lot of you are looking at me and saying, Michael, you're obviously in great shape. How did you get the body of a 12-year-old boy? And it's simple. Online gaming. Three or four hours in front of the computer every day, and you too can look just like this. Finally, it was time to jump in the water and give it a shot. After a quick lesson on maneuvering the puck on the pool floor, I thought I was ready for an actual game. You're going to hate it your first time. And if you want to come out once just to try it, you're, you're going to walk away with a bad impression. And that's an unfortunate part of the game. And I tell everybody it takes about three times to really decide whether you like this or not. These guys have clearly played more than three times. Check out the move by Dave, who spins, controls the puck behind his head, and then does that butt wiggle thing for a goal. Then there's me. Every time I got close enough to touch the puck, which was rare, I ran out of breath almost immediately. Over and over again, I left gasping for air while everyone else continued playing. I finally gave up. I'm obviously not very good at underwater hockey. I'll tell you something I am good at. Peeing in the pool. Mastered that sport about two minutes ago. Maybe I just need to become more of a free spirit because that's clearly part of the sport. I read online that swimsuits are optional. Do any of you guys honestly ever really play naked? Well, not in this public facility. So maybe like a private party, you guys get a little crazy. I got to come out and find out. Wow. Have you guys ever played without swimsuits? You look like you're hiding something. <laughs> I played the fifth. Hmm. It's easy to see why so many people don't fall in love with this sport the first time they play it because it really is very difficult. But it does give you a new appreciation, not just for the athletes above the surface, but below it. In Fairfax, Michael Jenkins, Comcast Sportsnet. Not much more to say after that, except we'll be right back.